the Alabama A&M Basketball Review. 30 minutes of highlights, analysis, and features of Alabama A&M Bulldog Basketball. The Alabama A&M Basketball Review is brought to you by Arm Software, Buffalo Wild Wings at Madison Square Mall, Woody Anderson Ford, The Fellowship of Faith Church, Tellini's Italiano, 90.9 WJAB, Five Guys, Aramark, Union Hill Primitive Baptist Church, and Wings to Go. And now, with Coach Willie Hayes, here's your host, Reggie Benson. Hello and welcome to the Alabama a and Basketball Review. I'm your host, Reggie Benson, along with Alabama a and men's basketball coach, Willie Hayes. The Bulldogs went one and one on their recent road trip. Coach, you find yourself now at the end of the regular season, slotted six for the upcoming tournament. Yeah, uh, we was trying to, you know, step in that four, five range. We had opportunity uh, to be at four. Uh, we ended up losing to Jackson and uh, end up uh, the next game beating uh, Gramlin. So that put us right at that six seed. You, uh, you're slotted with Southern, a team you're very familiar with. Two very, very good games against them. Unfortunately, we didn't come up right in the stick. Yeah, uh, two great games against them. Uh, one of them, Nick didn't play in. The other one, we had opportunities to win. I think we lost by seven and one and five in the other. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we just got to get ready for Southern, a tough team, long athletic team uh, that's going to that's gonna get after you, and we just got to be ready for them. Uh, now, Southern and Anna will play on Thursday, 2.30 in Houston at Toyota Center. Uh, by then, the all swag stuff will have been announced. We've been talking all year about the possibility of Tab becoming the player of the year. Uh, right now, where does that stand with you? Well, I, I think uh, he has a great chance, you know, uh, against uh, Jackson. I think he went 17 and 6. And then against uh, Gramlin, he went 30 and 12, 33 and 12. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he has a great opportunity to win it. You know, I think uh, he's been played, nominated player of the week at least four times. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he got it this last week. So that'll be a record for player of the week in our conference. So yeah. I think he has a legitimate shot. I just wish we probably could have stayed up in that number four seed to really help him out get that player of the year. Surely if he can't be player of the year, then he'll be first team all league and then possibly maybe the newcomer of the year. Yeah, but you know what, uh, he should get newcomer of the year and should be first team. Uh, I wanted him to get that player of the year. I wish we could have a couple of them games we lost by three points. I wish right. we could have won those games. You could have been slid, slotted up there a little bit higher yeah. uh, to help him out get that player of the year. Uh, if, the, if he's fortunate enough to get the player of the year, and if I'm mistaken, could be the first player of the year since Obi Trotter. Yes, since Obi Trotter. <laughs> what a name. Now, that, yeah, that'll be the first one since Obi Trotter. That was a guy that was uh, ended up being the uh, player of the decade uh, in the SWAC. So that'll be a big honor for, for not just for. Uh, Ladarius, but for our university in a whole. Also, two other possibilities, Nick West and also Rakia Battle, your point guard. There's a chance that they could find themselves on one of those teams. Yes, uh, Nick, you know, he's right around 12 points a game. I think he was second in the league in rebound. And then you got Rakia, who's leading the league and assists uh, in the league. So, you know, those two guys have a great chance of making all conference, too. Real quick, health wise, your team? Uh, just a little, you know, a little uh, nagging injury right now toward the end of the year, maybe ankles and then a little weather. So I think uh, with these couple of days right before the tournament, we should be okay. When we come back, we'll look at A&M's past games with Jackson State and Grambling. Thanks for watching the Alabama A&M Basketball Review. Brandon lights up the court every game. Soon, he'll do it as an electrical engineer. Jordan specializes in logistics and supply chain management on and off the field. Ashley's been schooling players at the net and student teaching in the classroom. Alabama A&M, four years of artistic, academic, and athletic discovery. We deliver the full university experience. Alabama A&M University, start here, go anywhere. Hello, I am Pastor Troy. There are a lot of people hurting, hurting emotionally, hurting physically, hurting financially, family hurting, hurting spiritually, and there is no hurt like church hurt. If you are hurting, I got a prescription for you. Psalm 147 and 3 says, He healeth the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. If you are hurting, come to the Fellowship of Faith Church and experience the healing of Jesus. Welcome back to the Alabama a Basketball Review. The Bulldogs travel to Jackson, Mississippi to take on the Tigers. Coach, you had a tough game here long time ago, back in January. Right. Uh, Three-point game, you end up losing that game. Uh, now you got to turn and play them. Short turnaround time after a difficult loss, and you got to go on the road. Yeah, it was a, it was a tough game here against Jackson. Uh, Ladares Tab 
Uh, only, he played in that game, but he didn't get a chance to practice days before that because of uh, a family issue. So uh, we ended up losing that game by three. Then, you know, we, we play a tough game against Texas Southern here on that Monday. And then we had to get out of here on Wednesday, head it over to Jackson uh, against a team that's playing well. Uh, that we, we just didn't come to play that game. Uh, there was a lot going on with that game. You didn't have much prep time to get ready for Jackson. Uh, we got there, well, we had to stay here and practice because we couldn't get in their arena to practice. We didn't get a chance to shoot around there, so we had to practice in their old volleyball gym. So it just, you know, from, from, from the beginning of that trip, it just, something just went right about that trip there. Give me an idea now, look, the last two home games you had, you were within a shot. You got a shot to beat Prairie View. You got a shot right there at the end to beat Texas Southern. How much does that weigh on kids? Then you got a short turnaround time to go on the road. Uh, to play a team that's, that's playing well like Jackson. How much is that a factor? I, I think it was a big factor because the guys, they felt like they should have won those games, you know. Uh, yeah, they got a couple guys with their heads down because they know we let two teams get out of here that we should have won, that we should have beat. And then to get on the road to play against a Jackson team that, you know, we, we, we can beat, that we should have won, but we just did not come out the gate in that game. We, we came out flat. Uh, we wasn't letting them score at the beginning of the game, but also we weren't scoring. And you know, you miss a, when you miss a lot of easy shots and crib shots, then they come back and score on the other end. It hurts you. Yeah. And we never could get in a rhythm in that game for some reason. You know, not to make excuses for your guys because they knew what was on the line. They knew what you were trying to accomplish. They knew what was on the line. We just came out flat. And you know, anytime you 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 know you call timeout, and you're not talking about strategy, you're more talking about effort and energy. You know, all the timeouts that w that we called or that was given. It wasn't about what we're getting, what we need to be doing. It was more about energy and effort, yeah. and I think that hurt us in that game. Well, that's something you hadn't had to talk about this, talk with this team much about in terms of energy and effort throughout the season. No, throughout this season we haven't, and I don't know. It's just that one game. Uh, we just, it was just for some reason we just didn't have it. Yeah. Uh, the energy-wise, from not only just from the starter, just from the bench also. Yeah. You know, you didn't, you just didn't see that energy that that want to be in the game or want to be there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what was going on with them at that time. We just didn't come ready to play. Yeah. Uh, did any, any signs prior to, during the warm-ups, I mean, during no. the pregame speech, anything? Well, you can kind of see the, 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 you know, that we had to stay here and practice. Uh, you didn't get a chance to practice in their arena. Uh, so they didn't get a feel of the court, the balls, the rims, you know, that plays a big factor. And then to get up the next day thinking you're going to get a chance to go in their arena and shoot, and they tell you going in the Walter Payton Arena uh, facility to practice, then you don't get a chance to go in there. Yeah. You had to go to their old volleyball gym, which is uh, <laughs> something like our old gym up on campus. Right. So it was just it was just all off the whole the whole day uh, from from that Wednesday on through uh, to that game. Yeah, yeah, tough situation, but and, you know, look. You got to deal with it and you got to find a way. You got to deal with it. You got to play. The game of basketball is played between those lines, mm -hmm. not on the outside of it. Even though with the situation, we still should have got up and been ready to play for that game, but we just wasn't ready. Yeah. Uh, look, you look at that 29%, you know, you, I don't, you, you guys hadn't shot 29% all year long. Yeah, and that, that was so ironic about that game, you know. Like you said, once from the beginning of that Wednesday, it just seemed like nothing was going right. Uh, we couldn't make layups. We couldn't hold the ball. It looked like we was running in mud. Yeah. They were moving, we wasn't. Uh, so it was just one of them games. And like I said, you know, you spend majority of your time out sitting over there trying to get guys' energy and effort going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 13 points for, you know, Tab and West. Really not a whole lot from any other people. Not a lot from anyone else. You know, uh, Tab didn't shoot well. He played hard, but just didn't shoot the ball well. Uh, yeah. Nick uh, missed a lot of easy crib shots. Uh, Justin started out well. And we just didn't have any help from anyone else. Yeah. It was just one of them games where no one else really took on the burden of saying, okay, I'm going to step out. Those guys are struggling. I'm going to step up. And normally uh, this year here, we had guys stepping up. But yeah. in this game here, we just didn't get that. How difficult is that for you as a coach and your staff? It's got to be. It's, it's, you know. it's difficult because you're, you're looking at the guys out there, then you're looking on the sideline trying to see who can give you that spark. Uh, I think we played everybody that game to try to get us a spark. Uh, we got it down to where we wanted it. I think at five minutes, we was only down eight points or 10 points. So you're feeling good at that point. You say, okay, finally, we're yeah. getting in our groove. But they go back out and they hit two quick shots and all of a sudden they back up 14. Mm -hmm. And now you got to struggle again to try to get back, get it up under 10. And we just couldn't get it up under that 10. Well, it's one of those games too, where you have to expend so much energy getting back in the games, you don't have enough energy to finish the game. They don't have enough energy to finish the game. You, you get right there, then there come that old hill again. Yeah. And you looking up that hill and it's hard to climb that hill when them legs are gone. Exactly.
When we come back, we'll look at A&M's game against Grambling. Thanks for watching the Alabama A&M Basketball Review. Ninety point nine WJAB FM Huntsville. One hundred thousand watts, twenty four hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals, and the home of mellow madness till midnight. You bring me joy. Ninety point nine WJAB from the campus of Alabama A and M University. Ariel took down enough pins to help win a conference championship. Her mechanics are just as strong in engineering. Aiden is mastering psychology on the golf course and in the classroom. No hurdles too high for Raven, on the track or in nutrition. Alabama A&M, four years of artistic, academic, and athletic discovery. We deliver the full university experience. Alabama A&M University, start here, go anywhere. Welcome back to the Alabama a Basketball Review. The Bulldogs finished the regular season at Grambling. Coach, Grambling's a team that had not won a conference game, and certainly we didn't want them to get well against us. Yeah, you definitely didn't want that to happen because that's one of them games where that would have been all over ESPN. Yeah. Uh, Grambling's playing well, though. They, they played a lot of teams tough this year. Uh, they just can't get over that hump. You know, they played Texas Southern the five. They played Southern the two. They played Bama State the uh, ten. So they've been playing well, and you know, I, I looked at that game and I said, now we, we got to go in here and play. After our game against Jackson, the way we played, but I knew our guys would bounce back, and that's been the story of this team all year. Uh, if we have a game where we struggle like that, they normally bounce back well, and we was able to bounce back in this game here. Uh, but it is a scary kind of game for a coach. I it's, mean. A, it's, a, it's a scary game going into the, the last regular game of the season because everybody thinking the same way. You want to win that last game going into the tournament. Mm -hmm. So everybody's fighting for that. And, and, you know, for us, you know, you're on the road. It's senior night for them. I knew Sean was going to come out looking to shoot, and exactly what he did. He came out looking to put the ball in the basket. But you guys get off to a great start. But a as we've done in the past, we kind of let teams get back in game. Got off to a good start. Uh, some of them got off to a good start, <laughs> put it like that. Uh, Nick struggled early in this game. Uh, Ladarius came out playing well. Mm -hmm. Uh, the big fella, Isaiah Cotton, put, gave us some good minutes. I think he ended up with nine rebounds. Uh, uh, then Rakia, I think he ended up with six assists. Mm -hmm. uh, as the game went on, we started trying to, you know, I think we went in the half, it was 29, 25, Correct, was, up right. five, mm -hmm. was up four. And, I, you know, the thing with this team here coming out of halftime, yeah. you know, that's the most scariest part of a game is coming mm -hmm. out of halftime because yeah. you don't want teams to make runs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we came out. We made runs, both teams made runs. It was, it was yeah. basket for basket. There was no lead change. It stayed at that five or six points for a while. Uh -huh. And then we was able to pull away and get, get a 12 point lead. But here we go again. Yeah. We get that lead and we get comfortable. Right. And then we let teams right back in the game. Well, Tav has a big dunk, push you up 10 with about three minutes and some change left. Right. And like I said, you, you let them creep back in and, and make it a game late. You know, it, it's so funny that uh, you, we started rolling at the, when, when we went up 10. It was like we was finna just go ahead and pull away. And uh, had a, a set play, ran it well for Tab, and he dropped it off to Nick. Wide open dunk. Dunked it, <laughs> but it bounced out. Oh, wow. Now it pops out, they go down and hit a three. Mm -hmm. And just for like that, from a 10 point game, all of a sudden it's a seven point game, yeah. and they got momentum. Now they come back down, mm -hmm. we turn the ball over, they score again, it's a five point game. Yeah. And that's just how quickly the game could change sure. just off a missed basket or a turnover. That's how crucial. Uh, that ball is to you. Is it, is it just simply a matter of focus sometimes, you think? Uh, I think it's focus, and I think that last night was just the opportunity of uh, Nick trying to, trying to throw it down a little too hard, yeah. and it bounced out on him. But yeah. mainly it's the focus part, you know, staying focused for 40 minutes of basketball or however long it takes because you may have to go in overtime. Right. And we just got to keep that focus when we're playing. When you look at the season, you, I think you hit on it. The fact is staying focused, staying in the moment, mm -hmm. understanding time score situation in games. That, that's the thing, you know, we, we had a lot of games where we was up maybe eight or ten points and we let teams back in or we let teams make runs. And that's something that you can't do because it's one and done now, right. uh, especially going up and getting ready to go up against Southern, a team that's known for making runs. Right. And we can't allow Southern to make runs on us. Uh, the Grambling game now, we, you know, we're trying to build some momentum, trying to improve our seating. What do you think the Grambling game is going to do for us going into the tournament? I mean, just being on the road. <laughs> Uh, your tournament's played on the road. Learning how to play against teams on the road. Uh, they threw a lot of stuff at us. Uh, he played zone, he played some man, he pressed a little bit. 
So we got an opportunity to see three different types of defense. And I think we handled it uh, pretty well. We didn't turn the ball over much last night. Uh, our guys stayed in attack mode. And, you know, getting ready for the tournament, I think that's going to help us. Uh, now, I know the, the record doesn't say we're playing well going down the stretch, but we have played well if you throw out the Jackson State game. Yeah, you throw out the Jackson State game. That was just one of them games. Uh, it was two games this year where we just emotionally, we just wasn't there. That was the Jackson State game and the uh, Prairie View game out of Prairie View. Those two games, I think that we just mentally, emotionally, we just weren't there. All the other games you look at, you lose by two or three points. You lose to Southern by five and seven. Everybody else, you lose by three points or less. Yeah. So those were probably the two games that we lost focus in emotionally. We just weren't there for those two games. When you look at your team and you look at how your, your, your playing situation is, you feel good about going into the tournament? I feel good going uh, in this tournament. Uh, Southern, like I said, Southern's going to be a, it's a tough draw for us. Uh, they're long, they're lanky, uh, they got some experience. They got guys to transfer from Texas A&M, uh, one from Houston. I mean, not from Houston, but from uh, Florida State. Mm -hmm. So they got some experience. They got some, some guys on this team, uh, the Adrian uh, Rogers kid that can really put the ball in the basket, and also the coach's son, uh, Banks. So uh, we got our hands full. I, I think the guys are up for the task. I mentioned it to them uh, the, uh, last night that we just got to be ready to play against Southern. But now, look, your team, even though it's a young team, no seniors, your team, you guys have had a long time to kind of get ready, uh, play against different uh, defenses, offenses, that kind of thing. You got to be pretty excited about uh, what can happen if you can kind of get on a little run. I, I, I'm excited about this. And even when we got back and, you know, I kind of knew who we was going to be matched up with. And I let the guys know who was going to be matched up and who was going to be playing. And I saw a little smirk on their face. So I, I think a couple of them kind of want to get back at Southern themselves because they know that both times we let them get away from us on close games. So, uh, you know, seeing that little smirk on a couple of them face kind of got me a little excited. So I, I feel good about going into this game. Sure. When we come back, we'll preview A&M's SWAC conference opener against uh, Southern. Thanks for watching the Alabama A&M Basketball Review. Brandon lights up the court every game. Soon, he'll do it as an electrical engineer. Jordan specializes in logistics and supply chain management on and off the field. Ashley's been schooling players at the net and student teaching in the classroom. Alabama A&M, four years of artistic, academic, and athletic discovery. We deliver the full university experience. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Welcome to the Union Hill Primitive Baptist Church, where we believe that our God-given vision is to be determined and steadfast in our commitment to proclaiming the Word of God. Join us on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. for morning worship, and take advantage of our weekly Bible study options with studies on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m., Wednesdays at 12 p.m., or Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Once again, we welcome you to Union Hill Primitive Baptist Church, where our mission is proclaiming the gospel to the lost world, producing mature disciples, and providing for the non-spiritual needs of the people. Welcome back to the Alabama a Basketball Review. Joining me now is women's basketball coach, Tamika Randall. The Lady Bulldogs have struggled of late, but really competed very well on the last road trip. Definitely. Um, I thought we uh, played hard. I don't think we played as smart as we needed to because we would have been able to come out with some um, key victories uh, down the stretch. So it is what it is. We, we're going to handle it, and um, we got another part of the season here, survive in advance, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, the Jackson State game, I noticed a name that I hadn't called much. Uh, Sutton ended up leading you in scoring, am I correct? Yes, sir, she did. She came off the bench and uh, provided a spark because we just didn't really get anything that much from um, our, our, our vets out there or the kids that played a significant minute. So it was good to see her come off the bench, shoot the basketball well, and uh, really created a spark for us going into halftime. And I was just so hoping that it would carry over into the second half. And unfortunately, it was just really a roller coaster for us. Well, you ended up bleeding at halftime, but then you give up 39 points in the second half, and that's why you ended up losing the game. Just uh, um, just bad turnovers um, from, again, from our point guard, Brittany, to Janie Miles on down to Al Janice. Just the players that play significant minutes not valuing the basketball. And um, I, it was a tough pill for them to swallow right there. And uh, we were hoping that when we, can, when we moved into Grambling, we'll be able to go out and fix those things. 
uh, Grambling game, though, you know, similar game. The Grambling jumps out ahead of you. You battle back and make it a great game at halftime down four. Yeah, kind of ugly match. Kind of tennis match going back and forth. Um, they made a run. We made a run. Um, Again, Janie Miles didn't play probably her, her best basketball game. Brittany and Taylor obviously shot the ball sure. well for us and handled the pressure for us. But then at the end, we had a great look at the basket. Um, just time ran out on our side right there, and we had to foul, or, um, and we just couldn't get it done. Well, Brittany finishes with 22 that game. Yeah. Taylor with 17, but yeah, you end up 65, 64. Uh, look, everybody wants to win, but. The, ha the fact that you played better over those last two games as opposed to what you'd played those previous five, what does that do for you going into the tournament? It gives you a little sense of hope. Um, if we're mature enough to really understand what, you know, going into this this third part of your season, understanding that all it takes, is, again, very similar to the Graham um, game, one point and you win the basketball game and you move forward. So hopefully uh, this day off uh, will get us refocused and re-energized and get ready for Valley. Uh, by the time this show airs, the uh, all SWAT teams will have been announced. I know you've got a couple of girls you think are, are worthy enough to be on there. Uh, well, definitely. I, you know, I think Brittany Strickland, again, provided a huge spark for us and led our basketball team. And then Janie Miles, newcomer, hopefully she'll be able to grab that award too as well. Sure. Uh, now, you get ready for a Mississippi Valley State team. Uh, you swept them during the regular season, won a very tough game at their place, blew them out here. Uh, give us an idea about that team. Well, I, I think they're going to play hard. Um, they're going to they got to be led by their their go to player, Ashley Bill. She's going to come out and tag very similar to Janie Miles. So it would be interesting to see them battle at and go after it. But again, I think we just got to take care of the basketball and make some baskets and uh, have some energy going into that and hopefully come out with a win victory. This was kind of Janie's uh, coming out party at their place, 24 and 12 when you played the first time back in January. Well, I sure hope it's another coming out party. I said, can we get two in a season? <laughs> hey, we might get it. Hey, it'll be a new, new meet. Look, at the Toyota Center, who knows what might happen. Anything can happen. Yeah, that's true. So while we're getting down there, and we're going to get a, a feel of the arena and see how it, you know, everybody responds to that. They get that odd, that odd factor out of them and then just get ready to play. So you're going to uh, you're gonna fly like the men's team, going to fly down and, and have a practice time, I guess, on, on Monday by the time this airs, you'll, you'll have played by them, but you'll have a practice time uh, in the arena and get ready for Tuesday's game. Get ready for a battle. Uh, anything that concerns you uh, as you move forward about this team now? Because, look, if you get a chance to beat Va Valley, then you'll get either, what, Texas Southern perhaps or Southern? Texas Southern. Texas we'll Southern. Uh, okay. end up getting them. Uh, the, the biggest thing with the, with the Valley, don't look ahead. Just stay in the moment uh, and play hard as you can and as smart as you can for 40 minutes. Yeah. Uh, let the next day take care of itself. It's just, again, survive and advance. So all you need is one point more than the other team. And I don't want to be calling the dry cleaners early. Uh, focus. I mean, we talked about it with, with Coach Hayes about the ability to focus on the task at hand. Absolutely. Yeah. New season. Yeah, Coach, good luck. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Alabama a and Basketball Review. When we come back, we'll be rejoined by Coach Hayes. Ariel took down enough pins to help win a conference championship. Her mechanics are just as strong in engineering. Aiden is mastering psychology on the golf course and in the classroom. No hurdles too high for Raven, on the track or in nutrition. Alabama A&M, four years of artistic, academic, and athletic discovery. We deliver the full university experience. Alabama A&M University, start here, go anywhere. 90.9 WJAB FM Huntsville 100,000 watts 24 hours a day Smooth jazz and cool vocals and the home of mellow madness till midnight You bring me joy 90.9 WJAB from the campus of Alabama A&M University Brandon lights up the court every game. Soon, he'll do it as an electrical engineer. Jordan specializes in logistics and supply chain management on and off the field. Ashley's been schooling players at the net and student teaching in the classroom. Alabama A&M, four years of artistic, academic, and athletic discovery. We deliver the full university experience. Alabama A&M University, start here, go anywhere. Welcome back to the Alabama a and Basketball Review. 
The Bulldogs will take on Southern in the Southwest Athletic Conference Tournament on Thursday at 2.30. Coach, you're the sixth seed, says the three seed. Two really good games. You lost by seven here, lost by five of their place. Hopefully the third time will be the charm. Well, we hope the third, tar the third time will be a charm, but we got to play. We got to play 40 minutes of basketball. Um, each time uh, against uh, Southern, we allow them to make runs. You can't la allow a team like that to make runs. Or if they do make runs, you got to make a run better or equal to what they do. And mm -hmm. Southern is known for making runs coming out of halftime, and that's how they got us at that place. They made a, uh, they went on a 10-0 run coming out of halftime. We've talked about their length. I mean, you know, we talk about Nick and being one of the more versatile players in the league. Uh, they've got two or three guys, that, and, and then, you know, they, they put them on Nick, they'll put them on Tab and right. give them props. Well, that's, that's the thing with Southern. They're so long and uh, lanky and athletic. Uh, you know, they, they can change, they got guys that are interchangeable that they can send at Nick in at uh, Ladarius. So we got to find some other guys, Mike Hutchinson, uh, Adrian Elwes. Those guys got to step up and give us some good minutes like they've been doing all year. But this is time now, it's, you know, like the old saying, you know, it's one and done now. Mm -hmm. So ain't no holding back, ain't no injuries or nothing like that. You got to give us all you got unless you're going home. So when your team, uh, when either team goes to the bench, your team needs to win when the reserves are in for them and your reserves are in. That's going to be the key right there. Our bench got to give us a lot uh, because if you look at the two games we played against Texas Southern, I mean against Southern, their bench outscored ours. Mm -hmm. And that's where he's coming off with two other guys that can get him some points. And then also the Trey Lynch kid. Uh, he's the, the sixth man, probably he will be the sixth man of the year because he's averaging about 10 points a game. He, he's their little energizer bunny that comes off the bench. And his, game, his thing is to come in and score, and that's what he do, and we got to be conscious of that. Uh, I understand the last time we talked, you guys were busing uh -huh. to Houston. I understand there's been a change. There's been a change. We're going we're gonna to fly out of here uh, on Tuesday. Uh, we play Thursday, so we'll get out of here, give us time to get there, get our legs up on us, get a little practice in. So hopefully uh, that, that, that flying may help us out and have our legs up on us. Uh, look, I know you're the sixth seed, but coach, right now you're probably one of the most dangerous teams in the league, even though the record doesn't indicate it. Yeah, the record don't indicate it, but uh, you know, a lot of teams right now, they don't want to play us. You know, that's, that's good for us, but we got to go in there with that mentality, knowing that teams don't want to play us and go in and really go at them. Confidence-wise, I mean, you got to win against Grambling. I know they, they don't have a great record, but you got to have a little momentum going in now. Anytime you can win going into the tournament, I don't care who is against, just to, for your guys and your people can feel like, you know, they got some kind of accomplice on that last game. Because any team or, or most teams, they want to win going into a tournament just to give you that momentum. Sure. Coach, now, 10 years ago, A&M ended up winning the SWAC tournament right. championship, first time in school history. Can years. we duplicate that now? It's about that time, Reggie. <laughs> you brought it up right at 10 years, so it's, it's the anniversary time, so this should be the, the time we had that, uh, another championship come to uh, Alabama a &M. Coach, good luck. Thank you, Reggie. On behalf of Willie Hayes and Shamika Randall, I'm Reggie Benson. Thanks for joining us on the Alabama A&M Basketball Review.